I'm Jacqueline. We're gonna do a chatty get ready with me today. I see these often here on YouTube and I enjoy watching them, so I hope you do too. It's a new kind of video for us, so we're kind of experimenting today. Let me know your thoughts down below. That being said, let's get started. I'm gonna start with my eyes today. So I'm priming with my Too Faced Shadow Insurance. Oh no, that happens sometimes, guys. With eyelid primers, they just kind of like separate. This looks icky. So I just keep squeezing it until it comes out normal. Just means some of the oil separated at the top. It's not a biggie. I'm using this Crown C441 Pro Blending Crease Brush. I'm going to dip into this e.l.f. Mad for Matte palette, which I think I've used before. But I'm going to dip into this first shade right here and set our primer. So I didn't really set the lid because I'm going to go in with a more shimmery shade here in a minute. But to kind of get our crease going, you know, just for fun, just because it gives us something a little more interesting to talk about, I'm going to use this. This is my old... Now, I'm not using this because this is the best use of your money. Don't go out and try to buy this because it's not actually available. But this is the old... I put stickers on it. Uh, this is the old Morphe and Jaclyn Hill palette that I stupidly bought thinking that she put effort into this. I just haven't really been jiving with her as well lately. Feels like she's kind of grown and gone off this other this other kind of branch. But I don't know. I'm still waiting for her makeup line, honestly, and I felt a little misled by this last palette that she created, but whatever. I'm gonna use this. I'm I'm a little weird about this because I haven't used this palette a ton. I have used it some. I don't think it's very good quality. Just having it here sitting open on my vanity, it smells like cheap plastic makeup. Like it smells like cheap Chinese makeup. It smells so strong. It smells kind of offensive and it's, that's how all of their palettes smell. I mean, all the ones that I own. They may have changed things in the last couple of years because supposedly in the last couple of years they stopped being private labeled. What that means is that they are no longer mass produced in China and labeled 20 different names for whatever businesses are paying for them, but they're all the same product. So supposedly Morphe does not do that anymore. I mean, I was led to believe they didn't do that anymore when I bought this, so that's why they're not gonna be seeing any more dollars from me. With that being said, Let's move on with this eye tutorial. I'm gonna take a little bit of this light brown shade here. These shades are very dusty, so you do wanna dust off your brush before you go in. Though they are pigmented, they're kind of chalky and not very creamy when compared with some other shadows that I like, such as Makeup Geek or Anastasia. Now granted, these are an entirely different price point. These are some pretty lame ingredients. It's talc and mineral oil or the top guys in here. It's very cheap to make. So don't be expecting luxury quality. My thing is if, if a shadow does not last with a primer, I don't want anything to do with it because I can't make that work. These do not last very well on me. At least they haven't in the past is why I don't continue to reach for them. I hope that you have a different experience if you have spent your money this way. I'm just sharing with you so that hopefully some of you can avoid some of the same mistakes I have made. Just taking this on the crease, I'm focusing more on the center of my crease these days rather than the outer corner. It just means I'm placing my brush there first. It kind of lifts my hooded eyes a little bit more to do that is why I've been into that. I've also been bringing the crease color into my inner corner a little bit more to give a little more definition. Some of you I know in real life, which is really cool, but I have talked to some of you that have said, okay, Jacqueline, how long does it actually take you to film this? And it takes me a really long time because honestly, I'm trying to give you as much information as possible and I talk for way too long. So I'll be sitting here for an hour, hour and a half maybe, and then have to whittle that down. So gotten a lot better. It's more like 45 minutes lately when I'm sitting down and doing this, but see how we do today. Next color I wanna use, I'm gonna use the same crease brush. I'm still using my Crown C441. I'm gonna go into this kind of cooler tone shade here. This kind of neutrally cool brown. 
I am doing a more cool toned look today. I know this shade I have on my crease is more neutral, but bear with me, we're getting there. I was really inspired by Mariah Leonard this week. I'm not sure if you guys follow her. If you don't, I will link her channel down below. I really enjoy her. She's really been honestly keeping me inspired these days because she's doing different kinds of videos than what are most popular, and I really appreciate that. Really appreciate all the effort that she puts into her channel, and she's very relatable as well. So go check her out. She's kind of an editorial style. Her uh, her surroundings are more modern, but eclectic. It's kind of cool. She's very different from me, so definitely go check her out. But she did a video on a bunch of cool tone products that she loves this week. And I just felt really inspired by that because I have been trying to, I believe one of the first looks I did on my channel was cool toned and uh, that was on purpose because I feel like the warm, sunny, orangey eyeshadows are just so overdone right now that no one's looking for it. I mean, you just, you just end up watching it because it's there, but no one's actually looking for that right now because they're everywhere. So I'm just trying to provide you guys with something a little different. I mean, I love warm eyeshadows, don't get me wrong, but not everyone has the same coloring, not everybody has the same undertone, and though it's very popular in the YouTube space to wear the incorrect undertone just because you feel like it, I think that teaches people the really, really wrong idea that there's an ideal undertone, that there's an ideal skin tone to be, and I think that's really screwed up. I've actually commented on a fairly big YouTuber's account asking why they do this. Why don't they actually match their undertone because their foundation looks wrong and it doesn't match their body and they actually say, well, it's just because I prefer that <laughs> and they never address it on their channel. Just so you know, I'm not going to do that to you. <laughs> That's not how I roll. I'm going to take one of my favorite eyeshadows now. This is not a part of the Jaclyn Hill palette. Let me know, did you guys purchase her new one? If you did, tell me what you think of it. I want to hear about it because even though I haven't chosen to spend my money that way, I'm curious. I want to know if it's better better than this one. Is it creamier? Is it a different formula? Tell me if you know. I'm going to be putting this all over the lid. This is Himalaya by NARS. I hate it when people call it Himalaya. That's not what it is. It's Himalaya. But it's a really, really beautiful, kind of more cool tone, bronzy shade. And you can tell this is a favorite of mine by how demolished this is. The design is kind of an L shape throughout it. So it doesn't look like that anymore. It's so wet and wild. I think it's a small concealer brush, this one from their summer collection, the little pink and white guy. You can intensify this with some Fix Plus, which I may do in a second. This is probably my most loved single shadow that I own. Just putting that all over my lid. These dual intensity shadows are so shimmery they're beautiful and I don't have they don't have any glitter in them so I don't experience a whole lot of fallout or anything like that that's why it's a really fallback formula for me like if I'm I'm not big on $30 single eyeshadows but this one has served me well now that we've got that all over our lid I'm just going to blend out the edges no additional product on that crease brush and for right now, I'm going to leave it like that. In case you are wondering, the reason why you don't ever see me use a pencil liner on this channel is because I'm actually pretty sensitive to that. Ever since having two corrective eye surgeries, my eyes are very sensitive to pressure and dragging a pencil across my lash line has just not been comfortable since that surgery. Honestly, since the first one, which was about three or four years ago now. And I'm just kind of tight lining real, real close to my lash line. I haven't decided if I'm going to wing yet. I'm probably gonna do a wing, but I tend to do the wing on this side first because it's harder to get it correct. Ugh, you guys, I swear I never do this off camera, but just full of mistakes for you when I'm under pressure. Well, as I can scrape that off for now, we'll fix it. Oh, 
Well, the site didn't start off so well, but that wing is just fine by me. Mm-hmm. The wing's all right. I'm gonna go in and clean that up with a makeup wipe in a second, but before we do that, I'm gonna try to cover up that liner mistake I made on my left eye. I think I wanna add a little more depth in the outer corner. So, grabbing my E25 by Sigma, and going back to this e.l.f. palette, this shade right here. This one is more cool tone. Just getting that on the tip of the brush to kind of put out here. Makeup whip with a makeup wipe. So I'm gonna clean up my liner real quick. And while I do that, what are you guys looking forward to this summer? Are you going on any special trips? I mean I know we're partly through the summer, but tell me what you got going on down below. Personally, I'm really excited for Game of Thrones. And that's coming back in a few weeks. That's gonna be really great. Brainstorming ideas for this channel and thinking about maybe doing a Game of Thrones inspired look. We'll see. If that interests you, let me know. I'll try to make it happen. If I'm the only one who cares though, I might not do it. So, let me know how you feel. Ooh, I'm also really excited. This is not happening in the summer, but it's happening on Halloween. Season two of Stranger Things. Anybody else? I'm so into that. This is the number seven Stay Perfect Foundation. I love this. This has removed Revlon Color Stay from my top choice. I'm gonna go dampen my sponge. I will be right back. All right, I'm back with my dampened Eco Tools sponge. I've got three pumps of that foundation on this palette. I have not primed. I'm not going to. I've done my skincare for today. I don't need a primer with this foundation. I'm just gonna go for it. I am wearing the shade Warm Ivory, just in case you were wondering. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but just so that you guys know, I spent a good five minutes working my foundation in. That's what makes it look more like skin, is how much time you spend kind of working with it. At least in my experience, obviously, it has to be a decent foundation to begin with. It has to work with your skin type, but take your time. Really get it, get it worked in there and happy. It's a very natural skin tone color, which I find really, really interesting. As someone who has not purchased number seven beauty products in the past, this was my first one. I was, I was incredibly, incredibly pleased with the color that this comes out as because I find that a lot of foundations are very obviously pink or very obviously yellow or some of them are just plain orange but this actually looks like skin when you pump it out. It looks like a skin tone. I find that it's more of a neutral leaning warm, which is my true undertone. I have very translucent skin, so I feel like on camera that doesn't come across sometimes. My skin literally is translucent. Like you can see my veins all over my body because my skin is just like see-through, which supposedly is a sign for, of good genes. I don't really know if that's just an old wives tale or if that's legitimate, but it's what I've been told a couple of times over the years. Some of my medical background would beg to differ, but <laughs> anyway, this is the place for happy things and happy thoughts, so let's not go there. I really like this foundation. I have used up these three pumps. I'm gonna need like another half pump just for my forehead. It comes out in very small pumps, so I don't feel like I'm using a ton of this. said white girls don't have baby hairs is obviously insane. You see my forehead? Ugh. All these hairs are just like coated in foundation before I dry them. Oh well. 
I'm gonna show you guys a little trick that I've done for years and see what you think. I really like the finish of this. It's very dewy and natural without being like glossy or glittery. It's not shimmery in any way. It's just kind of luminous. What I do, my little trick that I want to teach you guys, is wherever you tend to crease. I have very expressive eyebrows in case you haven't noticed yet. So I tend to raise them a lot and wrinkle up my forehead like this. So what I'll do is when I have my I have applied my foundation and I blend it all in, I will do that a couple of times and then blend it out because you see how all the foundation is kind of gathering there. I'll go in and I'll blend it out again. If there's any excess product that's just kind of building up there, it'll pick it back up. See how not nearly as much product is gathering there now? Oh, these little baby hairs need to be in here. I'm gonna do the same thing for my smile lines. work it a little bit so less product is in that area less prone to creasing when there's less product I mean I think this looks fabulous it's it looks like my skin my neck is always pale we'll bronze it don't worry don't don't be alarmed just yet it gives a medium coverage it covers my redness but it doesn't cover my freckles and I'm kind of crazy about that because I don't know that I've ever been able to get that kind of coverage from any foundation. I've never had my redness covered, but seen my freckles peek through on my nose, and I'm kind of crazy about it. I kind of I kind of love it, and now I'm spoiled. Anyway, moving on, we're gonna do some concealing. I'm gonna go in with my Tarte Shape Tape, as usual, in the shade Light Neutral. And the only places I'm going to conceal is I have a couple of blemishes on my forehead, and I have one right there, so my breakouts are on their way out. Not quite healed yet. You don't need to spot conceal if you just have a little bit of something peeking through. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of just looking like a human being and having some flaws. I'm just, I'm just like that. I don't like to wear a full mask. That's not really my style, but I mean, I love full coverage, but it's just... I don't want it to look that way, but don't feel like you have to conceal every little thing because on most days, I just ignore it. I let the little things peek through. I let my little blemishes have a tiny bit of redness coming through. I don't care. Who cares? We're human. It doesn't have to be perfect all the time. I think it sets an unreal unrealistic expectation. And to just spot conceal and stuff for you guys when I'm on camera because it looks a little better a little more consistent for you than if I don't but in real life all those things are still there I don't really cover them up to powder under my eyes I'm gonna be doing something a little different I'm going to be using an old favorite that for some reason just fell out of my line of sight and I haven't been using it for a while, but really enjoy this. This is the e.l.f. HD Under Eye Setting Powder. This formula used to have glitter in it. It has since been redone. Thank God. Who wants glitter under their eyes, right? This is a very, very finely milled powder. It's beautiful. You could really set your whole face with it, but... It's not very economical with the size of the tub that you get for $3. I would say this is definitely comparable to the Laura Mercier Under Eye Setting Powder that has the special little reflectors in it to make you look younger. I think this is better, honestly. I've repurchased this. I have emptied this and bought more than one. Like, this is the only <laughs> under eye setting powder I've ever finished and repurchased more than once. It's awesome. It really locks everything in. It doesn't add any coverage. It doesn't do anything weird. It just looks amazing. I don't know why I stopped using it. Actually, I do. I do know why. Because everyone with dry under eyes hyped up the RCMA No Color Powder so much that I just 
felt like I was missing out on my life if I didn't use that. And now, honestly, I think this is better. I like the RCMA all over my face, but I like this better under my eyes. Just holds up a little bit better for me, personally. It's hard to argue with $3, you know? I know it's a tiny little thing, but as someone who's used it every day, it takes you months to go through it. Just look at how flawless that is. I feel like other powders under my eye just emphasize like texture and stuff, and this one just blurs everything. That's what sets this apart. So if you have not purchased this, go out, spend the three dollars, it's totally worth it. Throw away that little brush, it's not gonna do anything for you, but you can pick up this one. This is the e.l.f. small taper brush, it's amazing. And I'm gonna bounce out these lines a little bit more. I don't want to set them. And I'm going to keep using this. Well, actually, maybe I'll use my new brush. This is the Eco Tools Full Powder Brush. Just taking a little bit of RCMA No Color Powder. Oh, oh. You guys, I almost just dumped three ounces of powder on myself. Okay, I cannot be trusted. Of loose powder. Ooh. Aside from the eyes, tell me it doesn't look like I just woke up like this. Like, honestly, this looks so good. I just adore, I adore this foundation. And you can see why. I mean, I didn't use a primer. I didn't use anything to bore my pores. I just, just used this foundation and set it with a little bit of powder. That's all. All right, got our face all set down. Let's finish up with some cool tone products so that we can get an all over look. And I've got a couple of choices for us today. I've got a more economical one and a slightly more expensive one. These are some slightly more reddish bronzers. This one is pretty warm, so I'm not gonna go with this one, but if you needed to, you could use this. It's slightly more red undertone, but still a warm bronzer. This is the NYC Sunny Bronzer. And then this is the Balm Desert Bronzer and Blush. This one is kind of a neutral to more cool toned shade. It has a little bit of kind of a red or terracotta color in that brown, so we're gonna use that to bronze today. I'm going to use this e.l.f. pointed powder brush. satisfied with that level of bronze. Moving on. For blush, I also have a couple of choices for you. I was looking through my collection and found that I did not have very many cool tone blushes. Surprise, surprise. This one I feel like is a little bit warmer, though on the face it comes across a little bit cooler. This one is kind of a mauve tone, kind of shimmery blush from NYX called Chiffon. And this one is the Butter Blush by Phys Butter Blush by Physician's Formula in the shade Rosy Pea. I think this one is more cool tone, so I think we're gonna go with this for today. I'm gonna use my Wet n Wild Angled, I believe this is called their contour brush, but I like to use it for blush. To highlight, I'm actually gonna use a fluffy crease brush by Sonia Kashuk to highlight. And I wanna show you your choices, at least from my collection for what your cool tone highlights could be. Today, what I'm gonna use is Makeup Geek Glitz because, believe it or not, I've swatched this so many times, but it still hasn't been on my face, so I'm gonna do this one today. This is a really pretty cool tone pink. My favorite cool tone highlight, we're about to find out if the Makeup Geek debunks that, but this is the Ofra and Dupe That collab. Again, I'm not a big collab fan, but I saw this highlighter that Ofra was doing, and it was not one of their ones that was overly saturated on the internet, and I thought it might actually be good. And this is called You Glow Girl, and it was a collaboration with the Instagram account Dupe That. They have since started a YouTube channel. 
I really love this color. It's so, so beautiful. In fact, I'm going to swatch all of these next to each other so that you can see. So that's Makeup Geek. There's the You Glow Girl, much more pink. Also, on the more affordable side, we have Wet n Wild I'll Have a Cosmo, which is their pinky toned highlight. Not quite as creamy, that's what you get at this price point. It's just not quite as luxurious. But that's Wet n Wild, this third one down. As far as common ones that people know, Cindy Luminizer is another cool tone one. There's Cindy Luminizer there. It's actually quite peachy. And then this one, while it's not a pink one, it is a cool toned highlight. This is the Duochromatic by NYX in the shade Twilight Tint. They do have one called Snow Rose that is a more cool toned pink duochrome shift. This one, very obviously cool tone that nice blue purple shade. Oh, so pretty. If you were wondering what I wore in my pictures on Instagram where I did the kind of mermaidy looking thing with the aerial inspired colors, I was mixing both of these highlights, the Ofra and the Twilight Tint by NYX. For today, as I said 10 million minutes ago, we're going to use the Makeup Geek one. And again, I'm using this Sonia Kashuk fluffy crease brush. This was from one of those five brush sets that were $15, $20 at Target at one point in time. This is an old one, so I'm sorry. I'm just taking some of that Makeup Geek highlighter. Ooh, wow. Wow. That is gorgeous. That's so beautiful. I'm a fan of the eyeshadows by Makeup Geek. I haven't tried any of their lip products yet. Those are kind of new and they've gotten mixed reviews so I haven't decided if I'm going to spend my money that way. Kind of swimming in the amount of lip products I already have so it's not really tempting me but let me know what you guys think of these products too. Have you had success with the shadows? Have my videos resulted in you buying some? <laughs> let me know. What's your experience with the highlights? Do you like them? What shades did you pick up? I want to hear all about it. Share your makeup junkie stories with me. You guys get to witness all of mine. Ooh, I think I got myself a highlight mustache. There we go. Gonna do a little bit on my brow bone. So pretty. And my inner corner. So, since you guys have seen me do this a million times, I am going to pop off of camera and do my brows and mascara real quick. And then I will come back to show you the finished look my hair all done and everything in all its glory. And we're back for a cool tone lip color. Let's do it together. I have pulled out a couple of things to choose from. I've got this MAC lip polish pencil or patent polish, patent polish pencil that I showed in my haul recently. This is pretty cool tone so we're going to use that. And this e.l.f. Pink Kiss tinted lip oil. We're going to use that on top. And for liner, this isn't the most cool toned lip liner in the world, but it's going to work for us. This is Makeup Forever Liner 2C, which is kind of a mauve -y cool toned pink. So I'm going to quickly line my lips. Taking the shade Make Me Proud in the Patent Lip Polish Pencil. And I don't think we need the gloss. I think it might make it clump up a little bit. So I'm going to not put this on, but I am going to swatch it for you so that you see what I mean. This is a very light pink, but more of a cool tone pink. 
gloss, at least in my opinion. So kind of matches this lip, this MAC lip color. But for this reason, this again is not something that I throw in my purse because I am more warm undertone than cool. I can't just wear cool things on the fly like that. It, it really stands out. That's something that you may have noticed if you've been experimenting with makeup lately. Whatever your undertone is, the colors that are in line with that same undertone are gonna look a little more natural on you, whereas the opposite, if you're more warm tone like I am, wearing cool tone colors is going to really, really pop against your skin. So that's why this looks a little intense <laughs> even for a daytime look I didn't go too dark on the eyeshadow or anything but it's just it just looks a little more a little more intriguing a little more sultry I guess to wear I mean depending on the style of makeup to wear the opposite undertone so because I'm wearing this kind of cool tone look all over it just kind of intensifies the look even if I use the same kind of depth of colors on the warm tone side, that would look more like it's melding in with my skin, whereas this really stands out against my warm undertone. Just keep that in mind, like a warm lip color I can throw on when I have no makeup on, but a cool one I cannot. Of course, everybody is different. That rule may not apply to you. You'll have to experiment and find out. Let me know what you find out when you experiment with cool tone stuff. I hope this inspires you to do something besides the regular warm smoky eye. Let me know your thoughts down below. I will see you next time.